Hi, this is Michael. Um, I don't know if most people realize, but Koala recently uh, added the ability to record MIDI data um, right onto um, Koala sequences. And uh, I've been finding that very useful. So let me give you an example of why and how I use that. So um, my I work a lot with a collaborator and the collaborator and I have both agreed that we're going to use Koala as our primary tool. And uh, I actually use a lot of other tools. I don't only limit myself to Koala. So um, very often I'm making other sounds outside of Koala and have to then bring it into Koala. And so very often that means uh, I use my tools I may then arm the fader that I want to record, record it. I might even use like the sync quantum and change it to the number of bars that I need. My sequence is actually four bars. And, you know, I might get a perfect loop and that's really convenient to import into Koala. But there are limitations to flattening the audio like that. If I want to go change my MIDI later, I can't really do that. I'd have to like edit the audio and that could be difficult and challenging. And, you know, I kind of open up my old AUM file and try to edit it that way. And I've done that, but now that I can record directly into Koala, I don't need to do that. So let me show you. So in this case, um, if my collaborator might've sent me a real basic drum, pattern like this. And, you know, I then might want to create something using another application. So in this case, I took Harmony Bloom, I routed it to a synthesizer. This one's called Aperio. It's pretty cool. Um, and it sounds like this. And so instead of recording this fader, what I can do now is I can go to the MIDI routing at the top right. And instead of routing it to Aperio, I can send Harmony Bloom directly into Koala. And if I go into Koala, like I've loaded a Quokka, and it's currently just sounds like this. So if I click on the keyboard icon, and then click on Quokka, it's actually ready to receive MIDI data. So if I, let's duplicate my sequence so I don't ruin my original one, I can hit record, rewind in AUM, and then hit play. Ah, so that's interesting. It's set for pentatonic, so it's giving different notes. So if I change it to chromatic, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna rewind in AUM and then hit play. And I didn't duplicate the sequence. Rewind, play. And I'm gonna hit stop on the record when the fourth one happens. That's it. So that was pretty much all I was hoping to show on this um, video. It's really not all that complex. Um, I will give a little bit of one extra thing that I tend to do. Um, not necessarily expecting other people to do this workflow, but I do it quite a bit. Um, if I go to samples and more, I might bring in a MIDI out node, close this up. Drag the MIDI, I have to go to the samples tab. Uh, drag a the MIDI out onto my Quokka and then say swap. And so now that MIDI data is going out to the MIDI out node. Um, and I can say go to the AUV3 output and we can go to the MIDI routing and we can have Koala route out to that synthesizer to Aperio. I no longer need to route Harmony Bloom to Koala. 
um, so I could just turn it off. And so now if we go hit rewind, we have Koala, the AUV3 output is going from this sequence out to Aperio. So you no longer need Adam Piano Roll. You no longer need helium to do something like this. It can all be baked within Koala. It's all self-contained within Koala. You know, I can switch back to the other pattern. You can hear it's no longer sending MIDI. It's only this one that has the MIDI. That's it. It's not Harmony Bloom that's sending it. It's Koala that's sending out the MIDI data, which is very cool. I hope you guys find that useful. Um, I've been using this technique a lot. Like, I really like it. So hopefully you get value from it.